Now, of course, higher fuel prices are taking a toll on the nation's airlines. American Airlines parent AMR fell today after an analyst recommended that you sell shares because fuel prices are eroding their earnings. That analyst is Helene Becker from Dom and Rose. And Helene Becker is here now. Helene, great to be with you. Thanks, Pam. Nice so I, I, I don't like to just introduce you as someone <laughs> putting a, 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 rate, a change of rating on, on a stock, but why did you make this decision today? Well, there's more than just higher energy prices. It goes beyond that. It goes to the fact that the last round, two rounds of fare increases didn't hold. It speaks to the fact that if you look at American versus the peer group, they don't have a great strategic plan. Their plan is to kind of wait and see what everyone else is doing and then maybe do something. Um, they want to use uh, their, their joint ventures as a way to grow in the North Atlantic and grow in the Pacific. So that's of concern to us because it's not really them taking the bull by the horns. It's them being driven by what's going on in the space. And we're a little concerned about that. What about labor issues at American? Well, not only do they have those issues, but they have, um, not only do they have high costs, but they also have pension costs that are kind of legacy costs that have been there. But interestingly enough, their flight attendants today offered to extend their contract by 18 months um, for in exchange for a 6% rate increase and management rejected it. So I think the, the management's plan is to wait for the peer group to kind of resolve their negotiations and see where they wind up and then maybe negotiate. But I think they've been stagnant too long. They really need to start moving forward and, and getting not not to be punny, but to get the you know plane, the ship right and get back in the air. Now, are there other airlines that you feel are doing a better or more focused job of dealing with the fuel price increases, but also just the general costs of running their operations? Yeah, I think on balance, the industry has tried to do a really good job this year of rising energy prices by rising ticket, raising ticket prices, and that's what they've been doing all year long. We estimate that year-to-date, 70 percent of the cost of the increase in jet fuel cost has been covered by increases in ticket prices. Our concern looking out to sort of second half of this year is what happens to capacity and will there be pushback from travelers um, with respect to the higher ticket prices. So, Because capacity is already pretty constrained right now, right? I mean, planes are flying full. They're, yeah, pretty full. I mean, we're hearing that there are little chinks in the armor. We're hearing little, you know, issues of overcapacity in the North Atlantic, as an example. Um, from the peak of airfares to where they are now, they're down about 20 percent in the premium cabin. So it kind of looks like we're starting to see some pushback from travelers, and we're a little worried about that for the the second quarter. All right. So are there any particular airlines that you do think people ought to buy, having maybe taken advantage of a drop in price? Um, not right now. We, we, take hold a, on. we take a step aside, hold on, let things settle out, see what the first quarter earnings conference calls bring. We think that the airlines are going to be very cautious on the second quarter outlook. There's a, probably one more leg down, and then we'd step up to the plate. What about in Canada, though? I know you initiated coverage on yeah. an operation there, WestJet. You like the shares there. Well, we like the company. We think they're doing a really good job of trying to, um, of keeping very low costs and being very aggressive in both the leisure market and trying to expand into the business market in the eastern part of Canada. And, and, and they also buy back stock. And they've been cash position as a percent of the last 12 month revenue is about 45 percent. So they've got a lot of money to buy back stock. And that's what they've been doing. Tell me if there's an update on Hawaiian Airlines, because I know we keep talking about their new routes going into Japan, their expansion in the Pacific. What's the update on Hawaiian? Yeah, so they've got a you know, good news, bad news situation here. So they started service to, um, from Hawaii to um, Tokyo with really terrific to Haneda, results right? to Haneda, the Closen Airport. And they had really great results. Right. And then, of course, the earthquake happened, and almost every other airline's pulled capacity back. But they've hung in there. And while their group tour business is down, they are seeing um, pickup from the fact that other airlines have cut capacity. So they're, they're trying to hang tough. They just started, still, just started selling tickets to Osaka. It's going to be their second city. Um, if you go back and look what happened in 1995 with the Kobe earthquake, it took about two months for traffic to recover. So that would imply maybe June, July timeframe, which fits in very nicely with what they're doing in Osaka. Um, they've moved some capacity into Sydney. 
as well as Incheon in Seoul, uh, South Korea. So they're really doing a good job of hanging in there and, and uh, putting the numbers up in very, very strong cash position. All right, we're going to leave it there, but I want to Thanks. thank you very much for giving us an update on the airline industry. Helene Becker coming to us from Dom and Rose. Always appreciate it. Thank Thanks. you.